is our second lecture of our chapter number 5 which is the design of gantry gutter so students in the last lecture we will discuss about what is gantry gutter so you can see that in industrial building where the heavy load lifted from one place to another place with the help of crane gutter so your crane gutter is like this you can see that in this figure your crane gutter is this now this crane gutter is supported on which system this crane gutter is basically supported on gantry gutter so you can see that this is your steel section and this steel section is called as your gantry gutter okay so in the last lecture we will discuss about what is the component of crane gutter so there are main four components first one is crane gutter second one is trolley or crab so you can see that your trolley or crab is like this this is your trolley third one is hook or you can see that crane rail so your crane rail is like this this is your crane rail and last component is gantry gutter itself okay so students in the last lecture we will discuss up to this point now we are moving further to the loads on gantry gutters how how many types of loads which are acting on gantry gutter so students basically there are four types of load which we have calculated while designing of gantry gutter so your first load is vertical load okay so in vertical load which load is to be calculated so let us discuss with the help of this figure okay so you can see that vertical load in which the first load is self weight of crane gutter so you can see that this is your crane gutter and this is your gantry gutter so whenever we have to design for gantry gutter we have to calculate the self weight or the self weight of crane gutter is basically given in our equation so whenever we have to design for gantry gutter the first load is self weight of this crane gutter okay now second load is you can see that this is trolley and the load of trolley is going to vertically downward side so whenever we have to design for gantry gutter this is our second load and last load you can see that this is your second load is weight of crane crane or it is called as trolley and last load is hook load so you can see that in this figure this is your hook load because the load which is kept on upward direction with the help of hook okay the hook which collect the load with the help of crane gutter is called as hook load and the value of hook load is considered as the capacity of the crane i repeat the hook load is considered as the crane capacity because how much load the crane how much load has hook will collect so it is the maximum load and maximum load is given in the equation so it is crane capacity it means how much load collect by the crane okay so basically these three loads are considered as your vertical loads okay now second load is impact load from crane so you can see that this is crane now what is the meaning of impact so in impact load whenever you have to collect any material so there is some vibration load is subjected on four wheels you can see that there is four wheel this is wheel number 1 wheel number 2 this is wheel number 4 3 and this is wheel number 4 there is four wheels okay two wheels on both the gantry gutters so these four wheels when you have to collect any load or whenever you have to put down any loads then this four wheel is subjected to impact load okay and this impact load is considered as your vibration load and this load is continuously as your moving load now the third load is drag force so 
ड्रैग फोर्स इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज ब्रेकिंग फोर्स सो इन ब्रेकिंग फोर्स दिस ब्रेकिंग फोर्स मीन्स वेन एवर यू हैव टू ट्रांसफॉर योर हैवी लोड फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू अनदर प्लेस देन इट मीन्स यू हैव टू मेक ब्रेक टू ट्रांसफर वन मे वन place to another place so in drag force you can see that this is caused due to starting and stopping of the crane gutter moving from the crane rails okay so how much load is to be considered so this load is considered as 5 percentage of static wheel load and what is static wheel load so static wheel load means your maximum Wheel load, which is calculated in step number one. Okay, so this step number one is discussed later in this lecture. Okay, so this is your third load, and your last load is lateral load, or it is also called as surge load. So one example is whenever we have to start our bikes, then if we release our clutch, then some jerk is taken. Okay, so that. jerk load is considered as the surge load okay similarly whenever you have to start your any component say for example if we are sitting in the train and the train is standing and when it is suddenly start then one jerk load is acting like this okay so this jerk load is considered as your surge load now we have two types of traveling crane first one is eot eot means electrically operated traveling crane so for electrically operated traveling crane we have to consider 10 percentage of total concentrated load total concentrated load in which there is two loads first one is crane capacity it means how much load is taken by the hook and second one is the trolley self weight of trolley so this two load is considered as your concentrated load and second is 5 percentage of concentrated load but in hoc hoc means hand operated crane or it is also called as mot manually operated traveling crane okay so these two types of loads is your third type and fourth type okay so students in any type of gantry gutter whenever you have to design for gantry gutter this four load is taken into your mind whenever you have to design for gantry gutter okay so now we are moving further to our example number 1 which is the design a gantry gutter for the following data so students you can see that this is elevation and this is plan so this data is discussed in both the figures okay first one is crane capacity is equal to 200 kN it means this is your crane and the maximum capacity of this crane to lift the load is 200 kN it means this hook takes a load up to 200 kN it means 0 to 200 kN beyond 200 kN if you are lifting the load greater than 200 kN then this crane is not able to take okay so whenever you have to design for gantry gutter you have to design for maximum load and your maximum load is 200 kN in this example next is span of gantry gutter so it is already discussed that in our last lecture that this is your crane gutter okay and if we are thinking in 3d view then you can see that this is elevation and this is span so this is the span of gantry gutter so this span is given as you can see that this span this center to center distance between two columns is considered as the gantry gutter span so this span of gantry gutter is 7.5 meter span of crane gutter is given as 15 meter so center to center distance between these two gantry gutter is called as the span of crane gutter 
next is sulfate of crane gutter excluding trolley it means if you can see that this is yellow colors crane gutter so this crane gutter's components sulfate is considered as 200 kN but this 200 kN is your excluding trolley okay so this trolley sulfate is given separately by 40 kN minimum hook approach is 1.2 meter it means this distance is given as 1.2 meter wheel base is 3.5 meter now what is wheel base basically wheel base is shown from the top of the view so if you are seeing from the elevation point of view then only two wheels are there but if you are so from the top view there are four wheels two is this side and another two is this side so the distance between these two wheels is considered as wheel base and it is given in the equation as 3.5 meter next is sulfate of rail section so you can see that this is a rail section on which your crane gutter is moving so the sulfate of rail section is considered as 300 newton per meter last is yield stress yield stress means fy so the value of fy is considered as 250 megapascal last is assume no lateral restraint along the span so students this is the data given in the question so now we are moving further to our first step which is the maximum wheel load now you can see that first of all in the first like first step we have to find out how much load transfer from crane gutter to gantry gutter now this is your crane gutter and we have to distribute the load from crane gutter to both the gantry gutter so first of all your first step is maximum wheel load it means if your trolley is moving to this direction then this gantry gutter takes maximum load similarly if your trolley is moving to this direction then at that time your this gantry gutter takes a maximum load okay so now you have to design any structural component for maximum load so you have to assume that your trolley is moving towards to this end okay now which components load is considered as so your first load is vertical load and in vertical loads there are three loads first one is sulfate of crane so you can see that sulfate of crane is given in kilonewton but basically any load this is your crane gutter and your crane gutter's load is generally given in kilonewton per meter so it is udl okay so you have to convert your point load to udl with the divided by some length so 200 divided by 15 so your answer is 13.33 now you have to assume that your trolley is at this point so whenever your trolley is at this point then your this gantry gutter takes maximum load and this side of gantry gutter takes minimum load okay so at this point how many loads are there so first is sulfate of trolley which is given as 40 kN and second one is hook load so how much load is lifted by hook so it is the maximum load and maximum load is crane capacity so 40 plus 20 is equal to 240 now this 240 kN load is considered as point load and this point load is acting at this point this distance this distance is called as minimum hook approach and in the question it is clearly mentioned that minimum hook approach is 1.2 meter so this distance is 1.2 meter this whole distance is 15 meter okay so you can see that total concentrated load which is acting on minimum hook approach is 240 kN total weight of crane gutter is given on point load but we have to find out in the range of UDL so your value of UDL is 13.33 now you have to find out RA and RB 
it means how many loads how much load is transferred to the left side of centrifugator and how much load is transferred to the right side of centrifugator okay so whenever your trolley is moving towards the left hand side your value of ra x is maximum and whenever your trolley is moving towards the right side your rb is maximum so this is the revision of your mechanics of solid in which you have to calculate ra and rb so first of all your upward force is equal to downward force so your total ra plus rb is equal to 240 plus 13.33 into 15 okay so it is 450 kN now we have to taking moment at a so the moment at a is rb into 15 this is anti clockwise moment now what is clockwise moment clockwise moment is 240 into 1.2 load into perpendicular distance into sorry plus w into l into l by 2 so if we are calculating this calculation then the value of rb okay this is rb so this is also rb so the value of rb is 119.19 kN and the value of ra is 320.81 now you all know that at this point there is two wheel this is wheel number 1 and this is wheel number 2 so if two wheel takes 320 load then how many loads taken by single wheel so it is 320 divided by 2 so it is 160.40 kN now it is already discussed that another load is acting is called as impact load and impact load is your moving load and for moving load you have to consider and you have to refer your is 875 part 2 in which it is clearly mentioned that for eot electrically operated traveling crane you have to consider 25 percentage additional load of your wheel load so your 25 percentage additional load it means you have to multiply 160.40 value with the 1.25 and it is 200.50 kN okay now this 200.50 kN is your on factor load so whenever you have to design any component then you have to design for factor load and it is 300.75 kN okay so students this is your step number 1 so now in the next lecture we are moving further to our step number 2 so students this is the end of today's session thank you